capitalism is is not loved by the intellectuals and they have control of education and that's kind of where it you know it's not not all intellectuals hate capitalism but most of them do uh, it's if I when I meet professors and if I start talking to them about business and capitalism their disdain they might say they love Whole Foods and they shop there all the time but in general they don't like business and uh, they don't think they don't think wealth should be uh, accumulated that that's somehow they're unfair so that all emerges and I think that's what's being taught to young people and that's why they favor socialism although there is uh, Jan there's also an old saying which is that I don't remember who said it, maybe, uh, I know I've heard Mark Twain might have said it or Churchill might have said it or who knows, but it goes something like this, if by the time you're 21 you're not a socialist, you don't have any heart, and, but if you're still a socialist by the time you're 30, you don't have any brains. And socialism has been tried 41 times in the last 100 years, 41 countries have tried socialism and there are exactly 41 failures. It's not that socialism hasn't been tried. It's been tried over and over and over again, and it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't create wealth. And economic freedom creates wealth. Economic freedom creates innovation, experimentation, competition, and it raises the standard of living, not for a few people, but for literally billions of people. If you go back, if you look, if you... I don't think history is being well taught any longer. If you go back and you look at the historical reality of what the world was like 250 years ago, 94% of everyone alive on the planet Earth lived on less than $2 a day. And that's, in, that's today, adjusted for inflation. 94%, 85% made, lived on less than a dollar a day. Illiteracy rates across the world were 88%, and the average lifespan was 30 it has been capitalism, it has been economic freedom, it has been innovation, creativity, it's been business people combined with scientific breakthroughs that have allowed humanity to begin to lift out of the dirt. It's, and people just don't understand that. They, they, they look around and they see that we're not living in utopia. They look around and they see some poor people. They look around and they see it doesn't seem fair that some have so much and others have so little but they don't have any historical context for what it used to be like. And that's why I think every generation has a siren call of socialism. It'll create a better world, but it doesn't. It doesn't create a better world. It creates, it creates trickle-down poverty, and the, war, and the society gets poorer and poorer. It's very interesting to me. We saw a recent revolt or protest in Cuba which is always held up as sort of a, people are, they may be poor there, but they're super happy. Well, actually, they're not happy. They, they keep trying to get the heck out of Cuba and come over to the United States or get out and go to other countries. Um, so, yeah, the intellectuals don't like capitalism. They, they like socialism, but socialism doesn't work. And they just believe it hasn't been done right yet. This time we'll get it right. If we just get the right people in charge, this time it will work. Only it's not... A question of motives or intentions it's a question of whether it can it can create innovation and progress and it really doesn't economic freedom does socialism doesn't you know you mentioned uh, briefly in some the education around critical race theory as being something problematic why can you expand on that a little bit I hold to the vision that of the American founding that um, everyone is created equal that we all have dignity, that we all have value, and we shouldn't discriminate against anybody on the basis of race or gender or sexual preference or anything. Everybody deserves dignity and respect. Everybody, regardless of their race. And um, teaching that some races are inherently exploitative or evil that's a moving away from the vision of what Martin Luther King's great vision when he when he was helping lead the civil rights revolution in the 60s when he said that I have a dream that someday my daughters will be judged not by the color of their skin but by the content of their character that's the vision I believe in you know going back to socialism here when I talk to people young people who are uh, interested in socialism and believe that it's a good system and so forth. Um, they often will point to the Scandinavian countries right, as an example of the great success of socialism. 
Uh, your thoughts? They're not socialistic. <laughs> the Scandinavian countries, if you look at the Economic Freedom Index that both Heritage and the Fraser Institute in Canada put out, you'll see that the Scandinavian countries are very high in economic freedom. Um, you know, let's take Sweden, for example, which is often held up as the uh, epitome of, a, of the way what America should be doing. Um, yeah, uh, Sweden's corporate income taxes are 21%. Sweden has no minimum wage. Sweden has vouchers for education for every, every child in their country so that they can make choices of what schools they go to and there's competition in schools. And Sweden has 0% inheritance taxes. So I often say, so you favor those things for the United States, if I'm talking to a more progressive person. And they say, well, no, I don't favor it. That's what Sweden does. Why don't, if Sweden does it, why don't you favor it? I mean, obviously, this, the Nordic countries are more uh, racially homogenous, uh, and uh, they're much smaller, f lots fewer people, and they, they have better developed welfare states than, say, the United States does. But they're capitalistic. The means of production are owned privately. Corporate taxes are low. Competition is powerful. And they have to also compete in the world markets. So the Nordic countries, if you ask them, they'll tell you they're not socialistic. And when they were socialistic back in the 50s and 60s, their economies began to crash. And then, But they woke up put economic freedom back in and they've created very high standards of living for themselves. So they're, they're bad examples to use. The examples you should use for socialism are Venezuela and Cuba and China before it began to liberate itself economically. India back in the 60s and 70s before it began to uh, create more economic freedom. Or the Soviet Union or the Eastern European bloc. You can see the comparisons between Eastern Germany and West Germany. And I mean, West Germany was capitalistic and they flourished, and East Germany was socialistic and they, um, their, their standard of living did not advance, it declined. So we have these historical examples of socialism versus capitalism, and capitalism produces wealth, not for a few, but for larger amounts of people in the society, and socialism takes everybody down.